So I just completed The Wise Man's Fear, which is the sequel to The Name of the Wind, which I reviewed last year, and I do not get why this one is popular. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. See, with The Name of the Wind, I personally just thought it was pretty good. I feel it's overrated, definitely, but I get why people would love it. You know, I get why people would say, oh, that's my favorite book, or I really love that book, something like that. I get that, because, like I said, it's pretty good. The good parts are really good. I just feel that it spends way too much time petering around doing stuff that doesn't tie into the main story very much. And The Wise Man's Sphere is nothing but that. Okay, we make zero progress in the main story with this one at all. And I know that the middle parts of trilogies are usually a bit emptier than the first and the third entries, but this one takes it to a whole new level. It is horrendous. So this one, uh, this one will have a spoiler section at the end, don't worry. I can get more into that if you feel like it. But the beginning section part, man, let's start with Kavoth. So Kavoth is, you know, the one telling the story, and the whole conceit of the story is that he becomes a legendary hero dude. So it does make sense that he would talk himself up a bit, and that he's kind of arrogant. And yeah, it's not that he isn't an intelligent guy or anything, but this one really goes out of its way to make him just way too perfect. Uh, the first example is how the first big chunk of the book is all about him getting revenge on his school bully, Ambrose. And I mean, that's kind of pointless because he really did that at the be or at the end of the first book anyways. So I feel like it should just be, yeah, Ambrose and I, avoided, uh, and I avoided each other after that. Like, you could just put that in and most readers would just accept that as is. Um, and then after that, it goes into how he's so smart that he figured out a bunch of stuff other people never could. He invented new things that no one had ever invented before. He finds out, or excuse me, he learns how to fight in like two months and he becomes this ultra mega badass. Uh, he learns how to have sex from a fairy and then after that women are falling all over themselves to fuck him. It's just, it's really stupid and really annoying. Like. I could deal with it in the first book because it's made pretty clear that yes, Kavoth is an unreliable narrator, and so this isn't totally true. It was still a little annoying, but it was made clear. But with this one, oh my god, it just kicks it up to a whole other level. Like, I can't even just set it aside uh, because the story is good or because the prose is really good. Because the prose is still really good, it makes going through this a lot easier and quicker, but still. I can't just set that aside anymore because most of the good st stuff uh, is no longer there and Kavoth is just a million times more annoying than he was before. And some people have said to me that they're okay with him being so perfect because they know based on like the, the flash forwards, the present day, that he screws up at some point, that his arrogance is his downfall, that he does some stuff wrong and it not only causes his own life to fall apart, but it causes destruction all over the world. And to an extent, yeah, I do, I get that, but there's literally almost 2,000 pages worth of him just showing off how cool he is now. Like, we need to have him screw up at some point, or at the very least advance to being a more mature person. And then there's the story, which, as I mentioned, we get no progress on that at all. Okay, well, this is supposed to be a story about uh, Kavoth finding the Chandrian and trying to get revenge on them. And presumably, his quest for revenge is uh, what screws up the world in the, in the present day. Like, he does something wrong, or maybe killing the Chandrian has unintended, uh, unintended side effects. Who knows? Uh, I am still kind of excited to learn that, but we make no progress towards that whatsoever in this book. Like... The beginning part has him finally gaining access back to the university archives and doing some research in there, and he finds nothing in the course of his research. That, that's all. That's that entire segment of the book. Like, he finds out about these guys called the, uh, the Amir, who are supposedly, like, working in opposition to the Chandrium, but they're also kind of legendary, and it's also hard to find information on them, so then he starts going out looking for information on the Amir, and by the end he finds nothing. Like, in the first book, he found a little bit of information on the Chandrian at the end. 
Like, he just, he found out why they were going around killing people and why they killed his family in particular. And that was interesting. It wasn't a lot, and I was still kind of disappointed by it, but it was interesting, and at least we got a little bit. This has absolutely nothing, and I'm very, very disappointed in that. Really, this whole, the story of this one is just a series of, like, one-off adventures that feel more like, well, short stories, because they're all, like, a hundred pages each. Like, first there's him getting revenge on Ambrose, which I already mentioned, and that goes on for, like, a quarter of the book. Uh, and then he leaves the university for a while, and he goes off to be in the service of this noble way off in a foreign land, and that takes up, like, another quarter of the book. And that one was pretty good. You know, I was happy that we were seeing a change of scenery. I was happy we were getting to see Kaboth in a different environment. I was happy we were getting to see, like, some political maneuvering and stuff, but pretty much all that happens is there is in there is that Kaboth shows off how cool he is to the mayor, and, like, at the end, that changes around a little bit, but nonetheless, it's not, like, there's not that much happening. Even if I was kind of interested at the time, looking back on it, I'm like, wow, that was stupid. And then there's Kavoth uh, going on his adventures in the Eld, which is this big uh, forest. Basically, he's hunting down some bandits with some other people, and that goes on way longer than it needs to, because the majority of it is just them walking through the woods, not finding anything, and then camping, and people tell stories to each other, and... Considering that at that point we're hearing a story within a story within the book, every time that came up I wanted to punch Patrick Rothfuss in the face. It was so obnoxious. I did not come here to hear about some boy who wanted to capture the moon or whatever. I came here to read about Kavoth and his journey. And uh, ideally I'd be here reading about Kavoth who is less insufferable than the one we got, but you know... I will take the insufferable one if that means we can actually have something happen. Something interesting, something that applies to the main story happen. But yet yeah, he's... It's him listening to people tell stories, him telling a couple of stories, uh, them traipsing around the woods, and he starts learning another language from this other dude, and that that's about it. And I won't really go into much more because of spoilers, and... Even then, I've only covered it in broad strokes so far, but that's like the first two-thirds of the book, and in the last third, it's just a couple more stories like that, and they also don't tie into anything, and in a vacuum, they're all fine. The issue is that they don't tie into anything. Like, if if they wanted to just have a collection of short stories about this one dude who's super cool and super badass so that we can see him become this super cool legendary badass hero, then that's fine, but advertise it that way. Advertise it as just, this is a collection of short stories, you know, there, there's no overarching theme other than this one character. Like, don't pretend that there's a plot here and then get rid of it partway through. And I might get a little bit of hate for this, but I'm kind of falling out of love with the magic system here. Now, don't get me wrong, the first part of this book there's a lot of talk about uh, naming and Kaboth learning about that. And I like naming still because it's just so mysterious and so hard to teach. Like, they can't just say, okay, the name of the wind is this. Like, you have to learn it yourself, and the best they can do is help guide you. Or the best any teachers can do is help guide you, I think. Um, but Sympathy, the main one, the hard magic system that they spend the majority of the time with, I'm not as into that anymore because... Well, it's just a little too weak. You know, it's a little too weak. You can't do that much that's cool with it. You can do a couple of neat things with it, but overall it's just too limited and too weak, so you can't do any fancy displays or anything all that cool, really. And I think I had the same issue with Warbreaker. I just didn't really know how to put it into words. Like, Warbreaker, the magic is so limited for your average person because you only have one uh, breath that you can use to do things and you can't really do much with that. So you need to collect breath from like hundreds of other people before you have enough to really do anything impressive, like bring things to life. And sympathy is kind of the same way. Like you can do some neat things with it and once in a while that does pop up, but it's just a little too limited to be all that cool with me. But even then that could work because that would force Kavoth to actually well, think through a lot of his problems rather than just throw magic at it. And for the first book, that worked out pretty well, and for most of the second book, that also worked out. But then, near the end, he 
like I mentioned before, he goes off somewhere and spends like a hundred pages from learning from these, basically they're warrior monks, how to be an amazing badass fighter, both uh, uh, barehanded and with sword. And, like, that was the last thing about Kvoth that I was kind of identifying with and I was kind of into. It was that he wasn't a super amazing fighter, so he had to think his way out of trouble most of the time. And I liked that because it forces uh, the author to come up with creative solutions as, as well, rather than just the characters fought the bad guys and then it was a really difficult battle, but they won. And now, we well, we haven't totally lost that, but we've lost out at least part of it. I think that's uh, mostly it for the non-spoiler section. Like, I, I don't know how much else I can say without getting into specifics. It's just like, Kavoth becomes pretty insufferable. The story makes no progress. Uh, I guess I was still really liking the world building, you know, when we were getting expanded uh, parts of that. We were seeing different cultures and stuff. That was still pretty cool. Uh, we still we got a little more information on the fairies and how they live. That was pretty neat as well. Uh, but other than that, there's just not much here that I can point to that I said, yeah, that was cool, I liked that. And so, I mean, this is far from the worst book I've ever read. Very, very far from it. Um, but it's still, it's still bad. You know, it's still bad. And uh, I'm far from the first person to say this, but this is the reason that uh, the final book has taken nine years and counting to come out. Because... Patrick Rothfuss wasted the entire second book. He did nothing with it. He's done nothing but ask questions and ask questions and putter around and show how cool Kavoth is. And now he's struggling to fit everything he needs to into the last book. And at this point, honestly, I would just say he should tear the bandage off, like write it out as best he can, and then just shove it out the door. Because it's not going to be perfect, okay? One, it's never going to be perfect because nothing is ever perfect. That's that's not how art works. It never has worked that way and it never will work that way. But in addition, a bad ending is better than no ending. Like, Rothfuss can learn his lesson from that and then say, okay, I won't do that with my next series and then go off to write something new and better. Like, if your first series that you write is your best one, then, well, that just means you haven't improved in any way and that, that kind of sucks. Like, Rothfuss, I know he probably thinks of this as like his magnum opus and he must get it right, but Sometimes that's not how it works, and, like, yeah, a big part of that is that you wasted the entire middle part of your trilogy. Like, the thing is, by the end of this, Kavoth is only 16 years old. And apparently in the present, he's, like, only 25, which is also weird, because I thought he'd be, like, 40. You know, that it would take that long for the word of his exploits to spread around and to turn him into this semi-mythical figure, but whatever. The important part is, it spent the entire first two books just on his childhood and now we have to try and squeeze his entire adult life with all the important stuff that happens there into one last book. And, excuse me, we still don't know why he's called Kvoth King Killer. Like, presumably he kills a king, but which one and where? Like, we, we haven't even gotten any hints as towards that yet. And so this last book is going to have to build up that entire thing, show how the world fell apart, show how Kvoth faded into obscurity, and then also go to present day, and maybe it'll just end where it started there, where Kavoth still being like, yeah, I run this inn and life kind of sucks, but you know that's where I am now, and that it just ends on that depressing note, or maybe something else will happen. I don't know. Either way, I would really rather just have a bad ending where we get our questions answered, even if it's not answered in the most satisfactory way, than just never get an ending at all. So now it's the spoiler section. So, like I said before, it, it this book is split into several short stories. There's uh, Kavoth getting revenge on Ambrose, which doesn't even work completely because at the very end Ambrose is still messing with him. We really needed that much, but... And then there's him going off and helping this noble, who he his position is a mayor, but it, it's a... Uh, much bigger than just running one town, basically, without going into too much detail. But basically, while he's there, uh, Kvothe learns that one of the mayor's um, servants is actually poisoning him, but he has to find a way to prove it to the mayor, and then they have to catch the dude, and it's, you know, it's not a terrible sequence, don't get me wrong, but it does go on longer than it needs to, and 
it doesn't contribute all that much. Like, the, the main reason they put that in there is to show how Kaboth winds up getting money. So when he eventually goes back to the university at the end of the book, he has money to do with stuff. And like, okay, I'm glad that he has that now. Like, he can finally make his way and we don't have to spend huge sections of the story talking about how he pays off his student loans, which was obnoxious in the first book and just ungodly annoying in the first quarter of this one. But okay whatever, it's not that big of a deal. And then the third one is where he's walking through the elves, hunting down bandits who are stealing the mayor's taxes. And, like I said before, it's just them traipsing through the woods and hanging around telling stories. And then at the end, when they actually fight the bandits, it's kind of cool. But then right after that, um, Kaloth winds up going into the fairy world, and he meets this woman fairy who has sex with all the men she meets, and... She spends a very long time having sex with Kvoth and just teaching him how to be good at fucking and... God, I did not... I don't care. Even setting aside the fact that the, the, the phrase, kissing the woman's flower, is used unironically, it's just really cringy to see this uh, guy who um, is feeling more and more like a self-insert and has sex with this beautiful, ethereal creature, and she tells him about how amazing he is. It It's just really obnoxious. And then after that, when he becomes a little more confident with women, he goes out into the real world and starts having sex all over. It's really weird and obnoxious. Uh, but while he is there, he does run into this thing called the cafe, which is one of the most fascinating concepts for a villain that I've ever heard in fantasy. Basically, it's this demon tree that can see the future, and so when it talks to you, it can make you, it can tell you information that, yeah, excuse me, it'll tell you information and it knows exactly how you'll react to it, so that when you go out into the world, it'll cause the largest amount of chaos, even if you mean to do good things, which is, that's really cool. Uh, but then, other than that, uh, he eventually leaves, also he finds out the true name of the fairy lady, and that's how he's able to beat her, because he's just that cool and that smart. And then while he's out, he saves some women who are kidnapped, which, I mean, that's that's good and all. I'd be fine if they had that bit in there. I would make it shorter. But the fact that it's in there just to show off how cool Kvothe is and how amazing he is and how everyone loves him, and then after that, his story starts to get spread. I, I don't know. I just wish it tied into the main story at least a little bit. And then he finally gets back to the the mayor, and he gets kicked out, and he goes back to the university. And just that's where the book ends. There's not even really a climax this time. Like, the first book had a couple of different things that you could look at as the climax. This one just doesn't have one. And I, I really want to know whose dick Patrick Rothfuss sucked to get so many five-star reviews on Goodreads. I really... I genuinely don't get it. People that love this book... I don't get it, okay? I can understand loving the first one. And this one, I guess if you can look past some of the problems I had with it, I can see how you'd like it. I don't get how you could love it that much. I am genuinely at a loss here. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever read a fantasy series that started off this strong and then flopped this hard in the middle. And maybe The Doors of Stone, when it eventually comes out, will be better, but... Oh my god, this is, this was a giant waste of my time. You know, I hate to say that, but that's what it was. It's not like the worst book I've ever read, but it was a waste of my time. Special thanks to all of my Patreons, including, but not limited to, Apo Savalonin, Alex Humva, Ashley Watson, Ava Toomer, B. Quinn, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Elizabeth Violet, Emily Miller, Joel, Johnny St. Clair, Madison Lewis Bennett, Ronnie, Taylor Briggs, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and Vavictus. All of you, including the people who watch this far, you're all pretty great. And I should probably actually promote some other stuff now and again, so uh, check out my new subreddit and my new Twitter as well. They're all linked in the description down below, so, you know, you can follow that and never fall behind, always know what I'm doing, all that fun stuff. And, uh, anyways, I will see you next time. Bye.